Thank you very much. So Jeff had a great presentation, a great talk about flow, which helps a lot to avoid exceptions, especially those annoying error messages like method is not a property of undefined. But how do, how do we actually, how do you normally debug JavaScript applications in production? Well, first, get the error message. <laughs> of course not like that, we're using monitoring services nowadays. Then second, Google test stock overflow. And finally, implement the result into your code. And as we already know how to debug like a pro, and we had React conference, what about React exception production? I don't know if, if you see anything. But anyway, there's nothing in the stock trace and the source as well. So it's a common practice for JavaScript applications to have no information in production and to keep detailed error messages for development only. And we do that because we want our application to be fast, and we don't want all the debugging stuff into our final bundle. <laughs> the problem is how to replicate the exact behavior we've got in production to be able to investigate it in develop development. And here's where Redux comes in. Oh, that's wrong picture. So, by definition, in Redux, we have one single source of truth, which is the application store state. And all we have to do is to get this state and import into our development environment. The point is that debugging is not only about exceptions and error messages. I'll not read that. But in a nutshell, a bug is when the current behavior is not as the expected one. Like in this example. We've expected the last beer to respond. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not necessarily that it's something wrong with the last iteration. There's a problem in previous one as well, and most likely it even comes from the first iteration. So the current state is obviously not enough. We want the whole history of changes to see not only the problem, but also what caused the problem. And I'm very often in this situation when Users of my applications ask for help with some troubles there, and I just don't know how to respond, because there's no way to get any detailed information. And investigating different solutions, I found Dan Abramov's presentation from the last year's conference pretty useful. And inspired by the talk, I've built Redux DevTools extension. And just yesterday, I've released 2.0, where it's possible now to use it not only for Redux, but for any Flux architecture, and even not Flux. Here's an example of how we use it for inspecting React local state. If it's too small, you can find it right in this repository, in the examples folders. It's just a diff from you can find in the commits. So uh, we can move all the operations into a function called reducer. So it would be easy to test it. And also we can use it for debugging. We can pass it to DevTools. If you don't use Redux inside your application, you can get it right from the extension, just for debugging, just for DevTools. Another way would be to not use Redux at all and to send every new action and state to the extension. So you'll get all the logs. If you want more than just logs, or you have already a kind of Flux architecture, you can also subscribe to the extension and implement all the monitor's actions specifically for your architecture. It's more an experiment yet. We, try, we want to use it for NGX store and maybe for other uh, architectures. But if you do use Redux, then use it. Apply it to your store just as a simple store enhancer. Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's supposed to be very simple. Uh, and the good news is that you can use it even in production. Just remove this line about limitation dev development, and you get it there in production. The only problem here could be that for security reason, you might not want to expose your store globally. So it's just better to restrict it for specific URLs, like when we have a debug parameter there. So let's see how it works. Here's our counter application of increment and decrement actions. And regardless of which of those implementations you are using, whenever you want, we can see what is happening inside the application. We can see all history of actions. 
can switch between monitors to see more information, or can open them in separate windows. Oh, it's not so much space. <laughs> so uh, we can do that famous so-called time traveling, or just moving back and forth, or see all counter. So it's changing. Uh, also, we can dispatch actions right from here remotely into, your, into our application. Moreover, we can export everything into a file and investigate it later or share with other members of our team, exa exactly with the same state and the same history of actions. And, of course, you can import that said history of actions, and now we have our history here. Also, I have here some new features I didn't publish yet, so you'll be the first who'll see them right now. So before, we could see only when an action is dispatched, and now besides that starting time, we can see also how much it took to process the action reducers which is pretty useful for measuring the performance, for example, having different data structures. Also, usually when we are investigating an application life cycle, we want to see how our state is changed. Before, we could compare just two consecutive actions like that, but now we can select a start and end point and see the difference between states. Just hold the shift key. And moreover, moreover, we can even generate a test for those actions without, without template. Also, there's a feature I like a lot. You can close the extension. No need to focus the browser. Keep coding in your editor as usually, and whenever you save your changes, the code reloading will update the application, and if there are any uncode exceptions there, you'll get notified right away in your editor. Similarly here in production. If you've got an exception, we see a notification. Click on it, and you have all the details. You see when it happened and which action caused that. We can cancel this action, and now everything works. It's about there. <laughs> so it, it didn't work, now it works. Or like in that example of beers, which we saw before, we can spot the source of problem, and now this section is not problematic anymore, as it was. So if we've got such problems in production, we can either generate a ready test and investigate it there, so, for example, for those actions. Or we can export everything into a file and import into our development environment and investigate it with all our tools, with hot reloading, make some changes in our reducers, in our actions. Or just share this file with our members of our team and investigate it together with the same states and the same actions. So it's pre pretty useful to use for dealing with any troubles, even in production. But we don't want our users to do that, to install the extension and to export some files. Also, there are lots of cases when bugs from, product, from production cannot be replicated in the development. It could be even browser or device specific. So what we want is to be like this guy here. Whenever something but happens in our application, will be rare and help our users. Right there in production, with full control from the user side, and at the same time to have all our features, <laughs> our tools from development. <laughs> and I've implemented that in remote reductive tools. Unlike the extension, it can be used not only for web applications, but also for React Native, hybrid, desktop, server-side applications. And it got all the features of the extension we've seen before, and even more. Here's a new feature. 
we can stick to a specific instance and synchronize all others. For example, we can make some changes, dispatch some actions in iOS emulator, and have everything synchronized in the Android emulator. Or similarly, we can have some real devices up there and have everything synchronized there in production. And why not we can use the same Redux store for hybrid desktop applications or web applications in different browsers and make some changes and see that how they affect the application, how they are reflected everywhere. It's pretty convenient to use for uh, <coughs> testing user interfaces. Similarly, one instance can be in production and another one in development and have everything there replicated in real time. So how, how we get it to our application? It's, it's just as for the extension, we add its store enhancer, and it's even simpler than the extensions one because we have those conditions about environment already inside. So it will work in real time only when not the environment is development. But we can specify it explicitly like we did before. But usually you don't have to we have other parameters to use in production. So what we want from production? As, we, as I said, we want to get the error messages, to keep track of all exceptions, and to have not only the current state, but all history of changes. And that is what send on error is intended for. If you set it to one, you'll get all the ex uncode exception. It will bind console error, We'll use window on error for browser and error tools for React Native. If you don't want all the exceptions from the whole application, you can use two instead, and it will send only error messages from your reducers. But usually you want to catch exceptions by yourself and use some specific actions of that. For example, in case of Redux Saga, we can have a fetch request, and if it fails, we'll dispatch will put a fetch error action. And by specifying it here, we'll get all the details to see what it, why it felt. So here's our guy. And we want not only, the, on, not only logs, as we did before, but we want to be like him to have all the, yeah, it's too, too big. OK. <laughs> so we want to have all the information in real time and also to control the application. And we can use send, or can we start monitoring with some action specified for start on parameter. For example, it can be a button up there like nothing works, I'm lost, please help. And we can stop it. There are lots of other parameters you can find in this repository. So let's see how it works. Here's our counter application. And uh, we have this new enhancer. Real time is set to false, so we will not have anything sent in. It will not, it will not send anything to our monitor application. Unless we specify it explicitly, unless we dispatch an action specified for send on parameter, or if we have an exception there. Now we have all the information about this exception and also all the history. If you start monitoring, now we have all action real time, and also we can interact with the application. We can cancel those problematic actions, and now everything works. Or like before, we can spot the source of problem, and this action is not problematic anymore. Let's say that this, ex this uh, application is in our development environment, and somewhere in the world, there is a user experiencing some problems in our application. I'll use another monitor to have it smaller. So <clears throat> whenever he starts monitoring, we'll get everything real time. We have all the control for that application from our side. We can dispatch some actions remotely into his store. We can even uh, reset the whole application. 
or import an already set history of actions, for example, to check if it's an already bug we've experienced before. But moreover, we can stick to that instance and synchronize our application from development. So now we'll have everything replicated on our side and we can investigate it here in development of our tools. If you don't, don't use Redux, oh, I close that. <laughs> if you don't use Redux, there's a solution for that. I called it remote dev. And <clears throat> you can find a lot of examples for different architectures in this repository. Here's an example of how we use it for RxJS. So it's, it's rather simple, it's more uh, proof of concept yet. Uh, we can just send every new action and state to the monitor and see all the logs. If you want more than just logging, we can also subscribe to the monitor and synchronize the local state or implement the monitor actions specifically for our architecture. Uh, <clears throat> whether you use remote dev or remote reductive tools, you also need a monitor server. By default, you can use our public server, which is um, pretty nice for development to just the start of that enhancer. But it's better to <clears throat> install this package from NPM and whether add it to your package sound script or import into your server JS as you usually use for webpack and start remote dev server together with your de development server. And here's our monitoring application we've seen before. It's just a web simple web application. You can customize and add some custom monitors there. And also it can be built as a web Chrome electron application right from there. And it's a library you can install from NPM and include inside your application or build some amazing monitor application. It's inside our extension. It's the core actually of the extension and you can open it right from here by clicking the remote button. But you can build our application to monitor, to monitor specifically for user case or to share with a community like some of contributors already did. There's a great solution for React Native, which includes the um, monitor application right in the React Native debuggers page. So you have everything in one place. And there's even a better solution to have a mo monitor application, which includes not only our monitor, but also the React dev tools here. There's an extension which includes the monitor application right in your Electron DevTools panel. There's an Atom package, so you can have this monitor right in your editor, make some changes in your code, and see how your application interacts to it, how your application reacts to them. Or dispatch some actions right from the generate, uh, generate tests. There's a command line interface to deal with all your instances in real time. So we've got lots of tools to help our users write in production. But we don't want all the time to respond to the same requests, to deal with the same bugs again and again. And this guy doesn't seem to be happy here. So what you want is to have a service which would store all the logs so we will know exactly what is happening inside our application at any time. Also, it would <coughs> group the requests by actions, users, bugs, exceptions, and we would know when our interaction is really necessary. I'm working on such a service. It's called remotedev.io. If you are interested, you can subscribe for better. And you can find me on Twitter as mdrdiv to ask any questions, I'll be happy to answer. They will talk to me here. Thank you. <laughs>